why in this video, we will talk about the nature and forms of a business organization. So, good morning everyone. Our topic today is about the nature and forms of business organization. So, this is the first lesson on our chapter. I'll be sending the syllabus later for your reference. So the objectives here is that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define and describe business and business organization, identify and describe various forms of business organization. What are these? These are sole proprietorships, partnerships, and corporations. Three, compare and contrast the various business organization. And four, illustrate the role of each form of business organization in the company. So first, let's define what is business. So in an online etymology dictionary, it means care, anxiety, occupation, which came from the word Old English that means besigne, okay? So it's an adjective which means careful, anxious, busy, occupied, and diligent. So in Middle English, the state of being much occupied or engaged, which is busyness, okay? So when you, uh, when you came across the word busy, it's also tantamount to the world business. So in year 1727, it, it used as a trade and commercial engagement. And in modern times and during the contemporary era, it is associated with an enterprise, a trade or for profit organization. So that's the timeline of the world of the word business. And if you want to Google it, okay, via Merriam Webster dictionary. It is an activity of making, buying, or selling goods or providing services in exchange for money. Work that is part of the job and the amount of activity that is done by the store, company, factory, etc. So, notice that the business word okay, is changing through times and that is what we call uh business in our present era so by the book okay it is an organization or economic system where goods and services are exchanged for one another or for money so it requires two okay two organization number one is through buying and the other one is selling and then they will exchange a transaction of money and the other one is a transaction of product or services so number two it is an entity in which economic resources are put together and processed to provide goods and services or outputs to the customer so now it is part of an economic resources because uh, in business, you will provide goods and services to your customers. And number three, it involves major activities like purchasing, financing, manufacturing, marketing, advertising, selling, trading, and accounting. So let's define the word entrepreneur first. So, entrepreneur is a French ber verb which means entreprendre and it, which, it also means to do something or to undertake in the 30th century. I know you heard it a lot of times before, diba? Right? So, it was popular, popularized in the 19th century by Jean Baptiste Say. And defined entrepreneur as somebody who shifts economic resources out of an area of lower and into an area of higher productivity and greater yield. So, 
Russell Sob Sobel observed that the verb has a close pronunciation to the Sanskrit adjective antha perna, which means self-motivated. So there's a lot of positive word that is associated <laughs> with business and entrepreneurship. So it is also a self-motivated person who is not afra afraid to undertake new ways of accomplishing something. And when we search it via business dictionary, it is the capacity and willingness to develop, organize, and manage a business venture along with any of its risks in order to make a profit. So here in the business dictionary, okay, we can highlight the word make a profit because that's the main goal of being a business person. So let's compare a business person versus an entrepreneur. So how are these interrelated and how it differs to one another? When we say a business person, okay, it is somehow a business aspect. When the activities can be arranged and organized in such a way that guarantees profit. While the entrepreneur, it is an insight aspect which the private ideas can be applied so that it may have more social utility. Business persons are imitators, okay, and wait for the innovations made by the entrepreneur, while the entrepreneur are innovator and observant. So we have these questions in our mind, Diva. Right? What are what are the difference between the business person and an entrepreneur? So the question lies with the innovations, okay, and the uniqueness of the product. When we say entrepreneur, it means you are the innovator of your product and services. Well, a business person is an imitator. It's not actually an imitator, but for example, you want to franchise or a certain business, okay? So uh, they imitate because it guarantees a profit. Well, an entrepreneur uh, risks everything at the start. So we have uh, the startup entrepreneurial activities, right? That uh, they, the entrepreneurs can also start from scratch. While the business person adopts the business plan of other business. So that's the main difference between a business person and the entrepreneur. So business person more, more likely to play safe and motivated by the financial reward of the business. Yon, like I said before, the ba, entrepreneurs are risk taker, goes beyond the profit motive, and the founders of the company and other forms of business organization. So when you came across an entrepreneur, it goes beyond the profit motive. What does it mean? It means that if the goal is to help the humanity or to have a service, they go beyond their profit. So the ulterior motive is the goal and they, they are able to take risk immediately while business persons are more, are more likely to play safe and they want to get a guaranteed profit if they make a business. So that's the difference between the two. So let's define and search what, what is the difference between a capitalist and entrepreneur. So according to David Chicart, someone who owns enough productive assets live comfortably on the income generated by these assets. So this is the example of a capitalist because they have a specific function to provide capital. What are capital? These are the resources, assets, diba? So objective of a business. So the main objective of most business is to earn a profit. So what is profit? It is the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. So in accounting, uh, aspect, it is the difference between the income, okay, less the expenses. 
So that is the meaning of the prophet when it comes to the accounting manner. So there are three types of business organizations operated for profit. So number one, service businesses provides services rather than products. So these are the examples, okay, of a service businesses. Number one, salon, okay? Number two, spa. Number three, BPO companies. And then we have second, which is merchandising business. So it is to sell products that they purchase from other business to customers. So what are the example of the merchandising business? SM, diba? So when you came across a furniture shop, that's a merchandising business. What else? Uh, some uh, small products like uh, you need to rebrand the product, so it's like makeups, diba? So they rebrand the product from other businesses to sell it for your customer. And sometimes merchandising business also uh, signifies reselling. Ayan. So number three, manufacturing businesses change basic inputs into products that are sold to customers. Number three is a very basic and traditional business, which is a manufacturing business, meaning they change the raw materials, okay, into products. So what are these? These are big companies like Nestle, okay, they are manufacturing the business. What else? Monday, so, and other uh, businesses that requires the change of a raw materials into a finished product. So that, that is the example of a manufacturing business. So what are the forms of business organization? Number one is single or sole proprietorship. Number two is partnership. Number three is corporation. And number four is cooperative. So let's define each of the forms of business organization. So we have the simplest form of the business organization in the Philippines recognized by law, which is the single or sole proprietorship. So this means that the single or sole proprietorship is owned by only one person where the manager is also the owner. It is simple and has a minimal cost and easy to organize. And the resources are limited also to the owner. So that's the example of a sole proprietorship. So when you came across a small business, okay, kadalasan ng mga owner nun is single, or it is owned only by one person. So, what are the advantage of a sole proprietorship? So, basically, you have a total undivided authority kasi mag-isa ka lang. Number two, low organizational cost and license fees. Ayan. So, if you register it, okay, in DTI, yun, yun, uh, mas mababa yung license fee na babayaran mo. And the organizational cost also is low kasi mas konti yung iyong staff, di ba? At yung pagsastart ng business mo. And number three, you can also save from tax kasi nga, when you start small, your tax percentage is, so, is also small. So, you have no restrictions on type of the business. But the disadvantage for this one is you have unlimited liability. Meaning, if you go bankrupt, okay, madugi ka, pwede kang um, habulin ng iyong mga customers. And then, you have also limitation, limitation on size and fundraising power because, yun nga, limited lang yung kaya mo maproduce na capital and limited by management's ability. So, if you have some staff, di ba, you are only managed by a single person which is a limitation on the management side. So, let's go to the partnership. So, Law on Business Partnership in the Philippines Republic Act Number 386 Civil Code of 1949. It is an association of two or more people buying themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund. So here in the partnership, it's different from a sole corporation because 
you will start at two, okay? Two or more people. And you can contribute money, property, or industry to your business. So it not it, it's not necessarily that you contribute the money, property, in industry, okay? So pwede ka lang mamili dyan. It's either industry lang i-contribute mo, okay? Pero dapat agreed na mga partners yan. And then, okay lang din na money, diba? And okay lang din na property. Pero, okay lang din if lahat, ayhan. So, pwede kayong mag-bind, okay? Ng inyong, at mag-contribute, mag-pull kayo ng money, property, or industry. Industry, it means service, okay? So, for example, may expertise ka na hinahawakan. Or may expert ka sa ganitong field. So, pwedeng ikaw yung mag-manage, okay? Pwedeng ikaw rin yung mag-oversee kung expert ka sa gantong industry. And then we have common fund. It's, it is an arrangement in which the individual share the profits and liabilities of the business venture. So, here in a common fund, okay, yung yung sinabi ko, it's like a pooling of fund wherein you have the arrangement, okay, by share. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng 50-50 yan, okay, pwedeng 30-40, or depende din if marami kayong partner. For example, 10, di ba? Take 10% kayo. Basta ang total niyan is 100%. So, pag ganun, sinishare nyo kasi yung profits and liabilities of the business venture, mas less yung risk, di ba? And then next is the characteristics of the partnership. So, when you register your business in SEC, the starting capital is 3,000 pesos. And it is governed by a uh, governing body, which is the SEC. So what is the meaning of SEC? It means Securities Exchange and Commission. So in mutual agency, it is an act of any partner that is binding on all other partners as long as the act appears to be appropriate for the partnership. So, meron tayong tinatawag dito ng mutual. Okay? Ito yung nagiging trust ng lahat ng partners. Okay? Dahil as long as the act appears to be appropriate for the partnership, lahat kayo should be mutual in agreement. Yun yung tinatawag natin. So, kailangan, hindi kayo... Um, pasalungat ng mga desisyon, okay? So, kung nag yung isang partner, kailangan may mutual agreement kayo na lahat mag -yes. Basta appropriate siya sa partnership, di ba? Para naman sa ikakabuti ng business yun. And then, number three, it has a limited life. So, meron lang terms, okay? Or contract yung isang partnership. And then, we have also the unlimited liability. Dito naman, Pwede kang habulin din ng mga partners mo kasi uh, pwedeng isa sa mga partners is magkaroon ng uh, unlimited liability. And then, we have also the co-ownership of the property. So, meaning if you, if I, ba ako yung partner sa isang business, bumili ako ng laptop, and may mga partners ako, magiging co-owner din sila ng laptop ko. Ayan. So, we have also the business ethics of partnership agreement. And the share of profit and losses shall be in the same proportion or the share of each partner in profits and losses shall be in proportion of what we have contributed. So, it means that, yun nga, if you share a certain profit, let's say 50%, and by the time na nalugi din yung company, 50% din yung magiging loss mo. And if um, meron ka namang profit na 10% dun sa share ng partnership, 10% lang din yung malalos mo. So, ganun yung ibig sabihin ng proportion dapat dun sa share ng partner. And then, we have also the duties and responsibilities of each partner that will take part in the business and also the conditions for solving business problem and management issues. So, net income of a partnership is not taxed as a separate entity. So, ibig sabihin, Lahat ng mga partners is subject to net income tax. Kasi lahat sila is kumikita. Ayan. And then, we have also corporation. Our third business organization type. So, patas pambansa bilang 68 or known as the Corporation Code of the Philippines. So, 
eto naman ang tawag dito sa mga investors nila is not a partner but a stockholder or shareholders it means you are owning the stock of the corporation and the members are non stock owners so big sabihin kapag um meron kang stock okay sa isang corporation ano ba yung mga corporation ngayon di ba Jollibee BDO di ba BPI uh, PLDT Globe. So, yun yung mga stock corporation. Ang tawag sa'yo is stockholders or shareholders kapag owner ka ng stocks. Pero kapag hindi ka naman owner ng stock, ang tawag sa'yo is members. Okay? Handaan niya yan. So, an entity created by law that is separate and distinct from its owners and its continued existence is dependent upon the corporate status of the state in which in it is incorporated. So, Ibig sabihin, kapag may corporation, nagkakreate ka ng separate entity from its owner. Parang nagiging, ano ko eh, um, bagong tao. Okay? Ibig sabihin, um, separate ka, okay, from the state, okay, in which in it is incorporated. So, kaya nga kapag meron tayong mga um, liability, di ba, yung ating corporation, hindi na hinahabol yung mga stockholders or shareholders ng corporation kasi distinct sila, separate entity sila from its owners. Okay? So, ito yung mga steps on how to form a corporation. Number one, file an application of incorporation at the SEC. Okay? At the Securities Exchange and Commission. And then number two, if application has been approved, the corporation is granted a charter or articles of incorporation. So, itong charter of articles of incorporation ito, important ito sa pagiging uh, corporation ng isang company. And corporate management and board of directors prepare a set of bylaws. So, bylaws, these are the rules and procedures, regulations, and conducting the corporation's affairs. So, nandito yung lahat. If you want to know about the rules and procedures of a certain corporation. So, number four, syempre, magbabayad ka ng cost. Mas costly yung corporation kasi mas maraming license kang babayaran. Legal fees, taxes, state incorporation fees, license, license fees, and promotional cost. Ayan. So, ano ba yung characteristics ng corporation? Number one, sabi ko nga, it has a separate legal existence from its owner. Ayan. Number two, they have also limited liability, which is an advantage. Diba? Like yung sinabi ko, if ever naman namalugi yung corporation, hindi hapulin yung mga owners. And transferable ownership rights. So if you, an owner, if you are, if you are a stockholder, pwede mo siyang matransfer sa ibang tao. Ayan. And you have also the ability to obtain capital and have a continuous life. You are also subject to government regulation. So, mas strict yung regulations dito ng government, di ba? Kasi malaking business na siya. And you must pay income tax on its earnings and stockholders are required to pay taxes on the dividends they receive. So, dito sa corporation kasi, you have the capacity to earn two ways. Okay? It is uh, due capital appreciation of stocks, which is yun nga yung income. And meron din tayong tinatawag na dividends. Okay? So, yung dividends, ito yung yearly na nare-receive ng isang stockholder kapag meron siya nung stock na yun. Iba pa yun sa capital appreciation. So, subject din siya sa, sa tax. Kasi, kumbaga, it is a, an, an, another source of passive income para sa mga stockholders. And you have also an artificial juridical person endowed with liability for self-management, management structure is at the discretion of the board of directors. So, yun nga, dahil separate legal existence from its owner, parang nagiging artificial person na siya. So, hindi siya natural person kasi pag natural person, di ba, by birth, dito, ginawa siya, like nasa bata siya, nagiging artificial person siya, okay? And then, it is beyond... With the it is endowed with the liability for self-management structure at the discretion of the board of directors as well. So, ethical issues ng corporation, okay? So, dito napapasok yung business ethics kasi 
eto, talamak ang tax fraud. So, ano yung tax fraud? Ito yung kapag uh, naluloko ka, di ba? Sa mga, sa tax na babayaran mo, so supposedly, ang tax na babayaran mo is uh, 100,000, di ba? Pero, binababaan mo siya. Kasi gusto mo mga mapababa yung tax mo. So, nandito na yung mga ethical issue. Diba? Kasi hindi sila nagde-declare ng tamang income. Okay? Kaya magkakaroon ng tax fraud. And also, they have irregular accounting practices. Ayan. And also, bribery involving top management officials. Okay? Which is against the ethical standard. Wasteful personal spending of company profits. Diba? And rights of workers. So, ito kadalasan yung magiging, nagiging ethical issue ng isang corporation. So, kung mapapansin nyo, uh, hindi ito nawawala sa isang corporation, di ba? Like, um, kitang-kita naman kahit sa ngayon, di ba, sa mga existing companies, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga ethical issues. So, lagi nyo itong nababasa sa mga, sa dyaryo or kaya naman sa social media, di ba, na nagkakaroon ng ganitong mga circumstances. So, next would be cooperative. So, law on cooperative in the Philippines, Republic Act 6938. It is also known as an act to ordain a cooperative code of the Philippines. So, this is uh, the fourth type of business organization wherein it is being amended. Okay? Republic Act 9520, also known as an act to ordain a cooperative code of 2008. 2008 which governs the provision of the nature, principles, operation, and other rules on cooperatives. So, ano ba yung cooperative na yan? Diba? Parang medyo bago siya. Alam natin, tatlo lang, diba? It is a special business type kasi because it is an association of persons with a common band of interest. It's not a partnership. It's not a corporation. But it is a registered association of persons with a common band of interest who have voluntarily joined together. So, madalas nakikita niyo yan sa mga union, di ba? Why? Because they have this common band of interest maybe in social, di ba, economic, and cultural needs and aspiration by making equitable contribution to the capital required. So, kadalasan sila lang din yung gumagawa, okay, ng kanilang mga rules dito. Pero govern pa din sa ating um, law. And then, you have also accepting a fair share of the risk and benefits of the undertaking in accordance with the universally accepted cooperative principles. So, yan. So, syempre, sa lahat naman ng business may mga risk yan eh. Diba? So, if may mga cooperatives kayo na may encounter in the future, ayan, hindi siya masya, um, may fair share of risk din siya at syempre, may mga benefits din dito. Ayan. So, you have also a fundamental principles. Ayan. Voluntary and open membership siya. Ibig sabihin, kung sumusumali, ayan, open din siya. Voluntary ka mag-open ng membership. And democratic member control. Hindi siya masyadong magpit. And you have also an economic participation and autonomy and independence as well. Kasi nga, um, hindi siya more on profit-oriented profit goal. So, meron silang uh, common interest, which is Kadalasan social movement yan, okay? And it is used also for education, training, and information as well. And you have also this um, concern for community, which is a re really essential, okay, for the betterment of our humanity. So, ito yung um, difference ng cooperative. Parang more on, ano siya, humanitarian-centered type of business organization. So, ano nga ba yung role ng ating business organization in the, in the economy? So, small business are significant contributors, contributors of economic development, job creation, and general health and welfare of economies. So, ano yung nakikita niyo dito na role, di ba? Sabi dito, very significant siya. Why? Kasi dito nagkakaroon ng uh, pagtaas na ekonomiya, ayon, pagkakaroon ng mga trabaho. At syempre, kapag may trabaho ka, sunod-sunod na yun. So, ano na siya? 
parang chain reaction na siya. So, gaganda yung takbo ng ekonomiya, okay? May pambili na ng mga kailangan sa bahay yung mga yung mga tao, di ba? And especially, nagkakaroon din kasi sila ng uh, sapat na education, okay? About a certain aspects, lalong-lalo na sa general health and welfare na ating economy. So, next is the Industrial Revolution who brought new forms of machine production that enable business to make massive quantities of goods ship and sell in national markets. So, this Industrial Revolution, as we know, diba, ito yung paggamit ng mga machines or technologies para sa ating production. Why? Kasi it makes our business efficient and effective kasi nakakagawa sila ng mas madaming quantity or produkto, okay? Na pwede nilang ma-ship at ma-sell on the national market, sometimes international pa. Ayan. So, large business offers better jobs in terms of compensation and stability. So, ito tatandaan nyo, if large business siya, mas nag-offer siya ng more uh, compensation kasi siyempre established na yung kanilang business. Kaya, uh, yung corporation, mas marami siyang benefits, okay? Kaysa sa mga sole proprietorship. Ayan, kasi meron silang mataas na net income, di ba? Marami silang benefits with their suppliers. Minsan nakakakuha pa sila ng discount. So, meron din tayong increased in consumer spending. And then, you have also this transfer of knowledge from one firm to another and sharing of pool of workers. Di ba, sabi nila, kapag madami, mas nag-work ang isang organization. So, ganun, ganun kaganda ang isang corporation para sa business, okay, if you want to go long term. So, we have also other ethical issues, okay, in terms of the role of the business organization. So, number one is the possibilities of exploiting the workers who labor at, at the new machines. Diba? And number two, manipulating the new financial markets that finance this large enterprise. Yan nga. Exploiting, manipulating, and producing damage to environment. Actually, maraming mga ganyan eh. Diba? Para lang kumita ng pera. Talagang magtitipid sila or kaya naman manluloko sila ng tao. Which is, dapat hindi na ginagawa ng mga businesses yan. So, that's all for our...